welcome to uh, those of you watching us online. Um, I'm Adam Hutler. I'm the executive director of Fractured Atlas. Uh, welcome uh, both online viewers and people in the room to the uh, Fractured Atlas office in New York City where we're hosting uh, today's issue brunch. It's a little late for brunch, but what the heck. Um, uh, I believe it's called data sharing. Do we have to? Um, <laughs> Just a quick note, uh, when this is all done, or shortly thereafter, um, there will be a version of this, um, I think actually an HD version, uh, posted on YouTube. So um, if you miss something, you can go back and check it out. Anyway, with that, I'm going to hand it to David Dombrowski, our moderator. Hi, so I'm David, and I'm with the Center for Arts Management and Technology at Carnegie Mellon University. And I'm just going to have us go around the table and introduce ourselves and talk a little bit about the work we do as it pertains to today's topic uh, of data sharing and do you have to? Or do you already? <laughs> so I guess we'll start with uh, Deborah Abramson. Sure. Um, I work with the Cultural Data Project at the Pew Charitable Trust, uh, managing technology on that project. Um, the Cultural Data Project, or CDP, gathers data from nonprofit arts and cultural organizations um, and then shares, allows those organizations to share that data with funders. Um, and also, it's used for research and advocacy. So, at the moment, our data sharing, we're thinking you know, about how this will evolve over time. But at the moment, we're doing all of our data sharing through pretty manual processes involving research, li research licenses and organizations manually or via PDF submitting data to funders. So we're still at a very um, kind of, um, in, in the initial stages of data sharing and being really cautious about it. So. Cool. Um, I'm Mara Smith and I am an account executive at Situation Interactive. We're, we're a full service uh, interactive marketing agency for live entertainment and including for-profit and non-profit arts. Um, and when it comes to data sharing, um, for my for-profit clients, we don't share, really. <laughs> um, but, but we do work um, closely with um, vendors like Ticketmaster or mailing lists and things like that. So when it comes to data sharing, that's sort of where we kind of fall the line. Um, for our nonprofit live arts, we do a lot of uh, Tessitura data collecting through that. So that's uh, where I stand. I'm Barbara Chanowitz, and I run uh, a grant program for the Theater Subdistrict Council, which is uh, an organization in New York City that funds a number of arts groups throughout the city with funding that comes through the sale of Broadway theater's air rights to developers. Anyhow, I'm here as a funder. I'm here as an interested party. We would like to help facilitate our grantees' data to be shared with city agencies, with other arts organizations, and other interested parties. Um, and in terms of uh, Center for Arts Management and Technology, um, much like Maris, our clients really don't share um, <laughs> and have yet to really express an interest in sharing data. Um, but from another perspective, from our technology and the arts kind of service arm, we do a lot of manual collection of data from across the field through surveying and whatnot. Um, but it would be so much nicer if that was all automated and aggregated and didn't require us to do it manually all of the time. That would be lovely. <laughs> Chris. I'm Chris Mackey. I'm executive director of Collaboration Source, which is a nonprofit that helps mission driven organizations, nonprofits, NGOs, and government agencies to transform themselves and their sectors by engaging differently with information technologies. So, we use an approach called community sourcing, which involves bringing organizations together collaboratively to design, build, own, govern, sustain, and enhance technology going forward. So we share aggressively. I mean, uh, we, we, it's literally impossible not to share information and to share data given the kinds of work that we do and the way that we do it. And I've been doing that for, I don't know, on and off for the better part of a decade now. Before this, I was at the Mellon Foundation, where we built a lot of the projects that use community sourcing. So, there are about 25,000 nonprofits worldwide serving somewhere between 30 and 50 million people a day who use these technologies, and all of them are involved in one way or another with data sharing. I'm Joe Harrell. I'm Director of Marketing and Product Management at Alliance for the Arts. Um, I'm the Product Manager for NYC Arts, so uh, data sharing is very much germane to what we do. Um, 
essentially NYC arts, so the philosophy behind it is that uh, the sum is greater than, no, sorry, the whole is greater than, <laughs> than the sum of its parts. That's what I get from using a cliche. Um, so, you know, the, the sort of everything we're trying to accomplish with NYC Arts in terms of promotion of the nonprofit cultural sector, as well as uh, leveraging the database that drives all of that work, um, which includes uh, CDP-like data, um, you know, and other sort of quantitative information. Um, all of that that drives our research and the promotional tools, it's, it, it must be shared in order for it to exist. Um, and, and we feel like sort of what is, what is lost, I guess, by an individual nonprofit arts group um, is gained, you know, uh, in, in far greater, in far greater, with far greater impact by the fact that you now have sort of the force of an entire sector uh, marching in the right direction, you know, in, in the same direction in order to gain visibility and other things that uh, an individual, probably the majority of the individual arts groups, wouldn't be able to accomplish on their own. Um, so you heard me say earlier, Adam Cutler, Executive Director of Fractured Atlas. Um, we, we're a, a national arts service organization. Um, we, we have a couple of big projects right now that I think are, are particularly relevant to this conversation. Uh, the first is the Athena project. This is a community designed uh, open source software framework um, for the arts and cultural sector that has been in development for about a year now and we're, we're getting pretty close to, uh, to a launch date, so that's exciting. Um, but that hopefully will, a lot of what we're building with that, you know, we're, we're thinking about data and data sharing and data syndication, uh, you know, as a kind of fundamental part of the design process and how can we facilitate that and how can we help organizations have um, more sort of fine-grained control over what they share and with whom. Um, so these are questions that we're sort of asking ourselves uh, along the way. Um, and then the second project that's, that's really relevant to this is, uh, is a suite of uh, online applications that we've developed called Archipelago. These are all about data aggregation. Uh, data aggregation, data visualization, um, analysis, uh, and, and kind of use in a decentralized way. I, I realize that's all terribly abstract, but we can get into some of the specifics later on if it becomes relevant. But the point is, you know, that project absolutely depends on being able to, you know, pull in data from other existing sources, including, say, the IRS's business master file, um, to the cultural data projects, which we're working with you guys in California. Um, you know, to our own online uh, uh, database of uh, performance and rehearsal spaces, um, you name it. There's a the policy map where we're, we're using to get um, demographic data to provide a sort of uh, demographic context to some of the information on, on where arts organizations cluster, things like that. So, um, you know, so that work is completely dependent on the ability to access good information uh, wherever we can. Uh, and also hopefully um, can serve as you know, something like a clearinghouse almost for uh, being able to then redistribute or, or resyndicate um, that information to you know, anyone who wants to, to use it. Um, so, yeah. so I wanted to start with a question and it would be interesting, especially given you know, aggressive data sharing over here and Mary's like, no, we don't share. <laughs> so, my question is, you know, what data is worth sharing? And what data should not be shared? 